Hello folks and welcome to Linux for Seniors. Now I am going to be doing a video here on KDE Neon, the Plasma Desktop. And I'll give you a comprehensive overview and tour. I'll also give you some of my tips on uh, certain things. Now if you're not familiar with Linux, uh, t um, Linux for Seniors, um, I did a previous channel in the past, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, which I had over 450 videos on, so this is not my first uh, project. But uh, let me just get you familiar with uh, my YouTube channel if you're not that familiar, and I'll give you some tips while you're in there. And uh, so you can navigate yourself uh, rather nicely and maybe some tips regarding your web browser while I'm doing it. So I'm going to click on my um, YouTube site for a second. It's called Linux for Seniors. Just generated this uh, new YouTube site on Feb 9, 2023. My previous channel used to be called Linux Tips for Thor. Some of you folks may remember that channel. It is discontinued and closed, but however, you can probably still find references to that if you type Linux Tips by Thor on any standard web browser, and you probably see that uh, how many videos I used to have. But once you click on them, you'll see that it, they don't play anymore. But more importantly, um, I'm not going to get into why it's discount, uh, discontinued and closed, but uh, my new Linux for seniors, uh, my intent is to make simple videos for seniors or any Linux enthusiast of any age. I have been around Linux for 25 years, been around computers for about 30, 30 plus, uh, but I thought I'd share some of that information with your folks. And this is also good for the distros, the Linux distros, Then there are many out there. Now, my previous channel, it got to the point where I don't, I had to turn off comments because when you have that many videos, um, you get a lot of people that just, I, I don't know what's going on with them. They're angry at the world. Some of these comments were not even generated toward my videos. They were like uh, just being disgruntled about something. So I really got tired of actually trying to uh, screen and release them. So I basically turned comments off. This channel, I have them currently on, but they are screened. So please leave out the salty language, the bad words, and, may, and uh, leave out the uh, bad links. If, if you think you're going to try to post those in there, trust me, I'll delete them. But I don't want to get it to the point where I turn off comments on this channel. So let's be civil. If you have nothing good to say, don't take this the wrong way. Please go to another YouTube site. Okay? So with that said, I've had a lot of decent comments. Um, one I got the other day from a 71 year old gentleman that really appreciated me making these kind of videos and he has now renewed interest in computers. Those are the comments I love to hear because it gives me more, uh, how do I put this, excitement to make more videos for you folks. Uh, another uh, comment was from South Africa with some conned words. So yes, this is uh, YouTube is around the planet. So keep that in mind about YouTube. All right, so um, I'll talk about this magnifying glass in a second, but um, I do recommend that you try to watch these videos on the biggest possible screen, the largest possible screen you can, uh, that you can, uh, I'm sorry, let me say this again, the largest possible screen for you. If you can't, and then of course, whatever the size screen you have, but I'm just gonna make mention that mobile screens are very small. Mobile screens would be like your cell phones. Small tablets, maybe. All right. Now I'm going to show you a nifty little trick you can do with your Firefox web browser. And you can also do this with Chrome and Chromium, I believe. Is uh, I'm going to make this larger. Some of you folks already know what I'm doing here. I'm at 150% currently. Just watch that number right there. As I grow, it's 160%. I think most people can read that. Some of you seniors may, may appreciate this or anybody who has, uh, well, vision problems or just want large text. So I'm gonna go back to 100. What exactly am I doing here? So I am right-handed. I am holding my computer mouse in my right hand and I have a scroll wheel on my computer mouse that I can scroll up and down instead of using this bar, right? Well, I can also use that benefit uh, to make uh, large items and that is by holding my left hand is not doing anything except it's resting near my keyboard. And a lot of people have their hands like that if they're right-handed. I'm gonna hold and depress the control key because my control key is in the corner of my keyboard to resize this. 
that's 140 percent that's 260 percent you get the idea this is excessive so i'm going to go backwards to i'll leave it at uh, 110 and i want to take my hand off the control key and now this is going to remain in this size and i can scroll normally or you can grab the scroll bar if you feel like it you're going to find some of the the little tips that i do is a little bit different than what you may see out there everybody has differences of opinion so i'm just going to show you mine and some of my tips moving forward we want to be in a positive manner now here's another cutesy thing for you if you have a newer smart tv a large smart tv for instance your smart TVs now contain applications or apps. YouTube is more likely found on your smart TV. It's already installed. If not, you can install them. Also, if you have a Amazon Fire Stick or Roku, you can also find YouTube there. But you can watch my videos on YouTube on your big screen. Linux for Seniors, bookmark it. None of my videos are under two minutes. <clears throat> that's one of the reasons I advocate that you subscribe. You'll find videos all the way up to 50 minutes. Maybe even longer. I haven't even looked at all the time frames. But I try to explain things in a simple manner. That's why it takes a long time to do that. And it takes a long time to upload these videos. And more importantly, it, it just generally takes a lot of time. So that's why I'm going to talk about this next blurb here. So uh, why is my video blurry or what's the possibilities? And what is this gearbox you're referring to? All right, first of all, let me talk about how I upload videos. I make videos and I upload videos this way. The videos are made either in 1080 or in 4K. That's the screen resolution. Then I upload them to a YouTube server. Those YouTube servers are most likely Linux anyways, but they have to replicate around the planet. That means YouTube is worldwide, right? Hence, I get comments from South Africa and other places because we are worldwide now. So that stuff takes time. So YouTube has to take my video and then convert it and then send it over to the other servers. So if it's in 1080 or if it's in 4K, 4K takes longer. It takes several hours sometimes, even after the video is posted. So if you're watching my video right away, you may get a lower screen resolution until the actual processing is done, if that makes sense. But all that stuff takes time to process. Just because I uploaded it doesn't mean it's available immediately in 4K. Does that make sense? Hopefully. So what am I talking about this gearbox business? Well, I'm going to go to my home screen for a second and hit this pause. So when you become a subscriber, you'll see this video running. So this is a standard player. You hit play, you get bigger screen, right? Full size. Well, there's a gearbox next to it. That's the gearbox I'm referring to. And if you scroll down, you'll see this quality thing. It's currently sitting at 360. If you view that on your, well, on your high definition screens, that'll become blurry. That's not the only option you have. Because my videos are done sometimes in 4K, like this one. is capable of doing 4K or a little less screen resolution. What if you don't have a 4K TV? Well, then it'll go to the highest resolution mode that your screen supports, that your screen supports. Mine supports 4K, maybe yours doesn't. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Click the about screen, okay. So that's what that reference means. So I thought I'd at least uh, qualify that and make people understand why what I'm referring to. So I have extra links for you, seven of them. Uh, sometimes these do change. DistroWatch.com, you're not familiar with that, you can look at other Linux distributions. Take a look at the right-hand side of the screen on DistroWatch. There's other Linux distros there. Uh, Gnome-Look.org is a nonprofit website. I use that quite often to get extra mouse pointer themes. Cursors. Some people have different names for these little guys. Uh, and up at the top here, if you're using a standard, a standard web browser, then you'll have these links here. These are not available on your mobile devices, You'll, but you will see the links in there on your mobile devices if you're, well, if you're viewing those there. I, I, again, I do recommend the largest screen possible for you. So a little foot over here is the gnome-look.org. That's where I got the mouse pointer. Okay. So let's uh, move along here and um, let's talk about this little smart, smart search here. So there's a magnifying glass. It's going to be the whole time when I'm clicking through these things, right? 
I click the videos and that magnifying glass is just sitting there waiting for you to click on it. This is a different magnifying glass than this one. This one searches all of YouTube. This one only searches my channel. I'll show you that feature in a second. You're going to find that of use a little bit later when you start becoming a subscriber and uh, the videos start collecting and you don't have to scroll all day looking for your subject. Let me show you how this works. So currently I have 43 videos. So if I was looking for something, I, it doesn't matter if I'm in the about screen. If I was looking for a video, let's say I'm looking for a video and for another distribution called MX Linux, like MX. I'm just using that as a reference. It finds all the videos on MX. Does that make sense? Okay. I think this is the first video for KDE Neon. That's why I'm not using that currently. But keep on watching. You know, my library will collect with a lot of different material. But everything that has the word MX in it appears here in the search field. All my videos, if you look underneath them, they'll have uh, either detailed explanations of something. There'll also be tags underneath them. That's how this is capable of doing that. Those are all tagged. My previous channel was the same. Okay, these are just tags. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. You can scroll if you like. Okay. So um, I also, once in a while, throw stuff in the community tab. So I threw up this uh, cute QR code thing here. If you're not familiar with QR codes, you basically get out your smartphone. Hopefully you're not watching this on your mobile device. Let me make this full screen. And um, I'm going to reduce the size of this a little bit here. I'm using my method I just uh, talked about a couple of minutes ago. And uh, I'm at 90% right now. So anyways, if you take out your smartphone, I don't care if it's a, uh, well, let's just use the example of an iPhone. You open up your iPhone uh, camera and you point it at it and you have a yellow box kind of floating around on your screen, which you can click and it'll actually take you directly to my Linux for seniors. And you can bookmark that and tell your friends and neighbors if you uh, like my channel. But more importantly, you can uh, bookmark it on your phone if you're wanting to uh, have a bookmark. Okay. So that's what that's about. And sometimes I post other little info boxes down here. But more importantly, there's the about screen. Here's your links. Here's your links. And I'm going to scroll back up and make this uh, 120%. Okay, just one little tip for you. When I get into the file manager, keep watching. I'm going to do a similar trick there, if not the same, same trick. Where do we want to start? How about if we start uh, on the bottom of the panel bar? So if you're fairly new to uh, this distribution or any Linux distro distribution, this is your panel bar. Uh, that's basically peak. Uh, it temporarily shows desktop by moving windows out of the way. Kind of self-explanatory. This is your standard calendar. You can also right click and do other stuff, adjusting your time and all kinds of other things. There's also, if you notice, there was add widgets. You can also right click on the panel bar and add widgets. I'll show you what widgets is in a second. The little arrow key, I flipped over. Now you have show status and notification icons. Helpful things, in other words. Your uh, wire or wireless is clicked on here. And I can tell you that the KDE Neon, I didn't have to bother with any kind of driver issues. Everything got installed automatically. Didn't have any issues. My, most of my equipment is um, within the last five years. Let's put it that way. Microphone is recording. Most recent writable device. Bluetooth if you got them. Volume, I have several. So if you are doing one of these uh, recordings of simple screen recorder and if you got one of those blue microphones, for instance, be aware that you can select the different things because if you're not getting sound, you probably are on this port instead of that port. Just a little tip for you. And now you can see my voice is traveling back and forth. Clip manager. That has to be there. It's simple screen recorder. It's red because I'm recording. And plasma browser integration. You can discover that on your own once you install this thing. Moving along, simple screen recorder is sitting here, sitting there in inconspicuously recording. Firefox web browser, self-explanatory. You can install others. And here's your file manager, and that file manager is called Dolphin. Actually, I don't need to hit about, but if you want to, there it is. Um, I just created some extra folders in here, and um, 
I am doing the exact same thing I did in my web browser, making these icons big or tiny. Comes in handy when you're in wallpaper. And by the way, once you get it to the, uh, when you're in your Dolphin file manager, once you get these icons to the size you want, let's say you decided to uh, settle in on this, I'm still holding down the control key, folks, with my left hand while doing this. Once I get it to the size I want, I take my hand off the control key and these will stay this way. And now I can scroll normally. I'm going up and down instead of dragging this. I don't ever grab this thing, actually. I just use, I stick my mouse pointer anywhere in the space and roll up and down on my my scroll wheel. All right, now that you uh, know how to do that, let's talk about maybe bringing in your digital photos of your children, your pets, your whatever. Nature. I have weird wallpapers too. So here's one here for you. This guy's got paint in his hat. I collected a lot of weird stuff over the years. Here's one for a mushroom. Makes for a nice screenshot. No, I'm sorry, wallpaper. Wallpaper. All right, so if I wanted to make that uh, that dude with the paint here a wallpaper, I would right click on him and set it as wallpaper. Can you do that with your own digital photos? Absolutely. I'm not sure what that one is. Uh, it looks like the Oregon coastline. So let me right click on this image and click properties. You can do this with your digital photos. If your digital photos have other information, it gets put in here. So let's drag this downstairs. This photo was taken with an Apple iPhone 12 Pro Max. It even gives me the GPS location. I can actually probably click this to find it on the map. Let's find out where it's at. And let me scroll back out using my little scroll feature, blowing you away here. Okay, now you can see the general location of this thing. You could also manually punch in those codes in a web browser and find the exact location a little bit better. More importantly, it gives me detailed information. A lot of your photos will contain that. Here's another one. This is Crater Lake, Oregon. I think I took that with uh, Nikon, if I recall. You know, the memory kind of slips once in a while. Nikon Coolpix S8100 is the camera. 2019, so it wasn't that long ago. Get the idea? All right, one more time. Holding down the control key on my keyboard, scrolling up and down, resizes these icons all the way up to very, very massive or small or dinky is what I call this size. And if I let go of the control key, they'll stay like this. And I, I don't have to grab a hold of this, like I said. I, I just scroll up and down. You can see the bar moving. All I'm doing is scrolling up and down, folks. I'm going to scroll. I'm going to grab a hold of the control key, press it down, and scroll back up to resize these. So try that out on your Dolphin file manager. Different ways of viewing things. There's lots of different things with all file managers of how you do stuff. You can even do split pans. What does that mean? Well, I could take this side and click my home folder, for instance, and open up documents and start transferring files back and forth. If I had a USB stick, I would click it and that becomes the USB stick and I can drag files back and forth. So you can see some of the benefits there. Let's move on from the file manager. So um, software center, we are dealing with uh, different software. Maybe you want uh, like Photoshop, that's GIMP, screenshot, install key, categories, search bar, Install programs. I'm running this off of the um, USB stick, so some of this stuff takes a second because this takes a lot of processing power. Uh, but more importantly, you can find your package that you want to uninstall. Just be careful what you're removing. Where's the stuff coming from? In other words, software. Well, flat, flathub.org is one. Flatpak software is flat, uh, software that runs in a sandboxed environment, isolated from your system normally and they're bigger software packages. A lot of your programs will actually show you there's two versions of something. Let me click on GIMP, for instance. Let me click on Sources. You can see there's Flathub here and uh, Ubuntu Jammy. Ubuntu Jammy is where this stuff is coming from. Flatpak software. You know, down here on Settings. Sorry, I'm waiting for the response here. 
Jammy Ubuntu. Okay, got it? Hopefully. Subcategories, searches, um, settings, installed, and about. And if you got some updates, I'm not going to update this. This is a live copy. It doesn't do me any good to update this thing. But anyways, this will give you a, an idea about your software center. So there's also plasma add-ons in here too, quite extensive actually. Settings. If you're changing anything on your system, I advocate screenshots. I advocate screenshots. I'm saying that twice. Do it for your benefit, not for the systems. Like when you start adding new themes, new styles, colors, decorations. There's combinations of a lot of things. It's always a good idea to make screenshots before you make that apply thing. Anything on the system. How do you make screenshots? Go to your menu up here, type SCR and look for a tool called Spectacle. You can also um, add it to your desktop and add it to your panel as a widget. I'm going to do that. But keep in mind I can add that tool to the desktop also. So I'm going to do that here just as an example. It's going to stick it down here in the corner. So it has a couple of ways of doing screenshots. This is a big dialog box and it confuses some folks. So I'm going to just talk about some basic things. So it says unsaved currently and it shows you a picture. It shows you a picture of the wallpaper, this window, and your panel bar. Your panel bar again is down here. So you got active window, but it normally defaults to full screen. That means it's going to take a picture of everything, including your busy wallpaper, if you have it. It makes for a big screenshot. Or you could do it smart and go to active window and just take a picture of this box right here. You can place this right on the top of this box. It will never take a picture of this box. It, this is the tool. It never takes a picture of itself. Does that make sense? So I'm going to do active window of this box behind this box. So this is not the active window. This is the active window. Now I'm going to take the screenshot, snap it. Here's the thumbnail. Then I'm going to save it as, and I'm going to send it to my desktop or save it to my desktop, keeping all the, the particulars the same. And there's the screenshot. The file size is very small. It's 90 kilobytes, roughly KIB format, 92,000 bytes. Okay, you can translate KIB if you like on the internet. But more importantly, this is what it looks like. I can clearly see everything in here. So if you're making system changes, I advocate that you do this, especially with anything that has to do with themes, because you, after you start uploading a lot of stuff, you're going to forget what your settings are. You can always take these and save them for uh, in, your, um, in your folders. So anything that has to do with numbers or settings, let me do another one for this one, just to have an exercise. And I'll take a, another active window screenshot and save to the desktop. That's two and close. And we'll find something else. You can, you can see where I'm going with this, right? So anytime that you are wanting to make different, um, you know, like if you got a good memory, this is not too hard to figure out, right? But some of this other stuff that you have multiple uh, windows of, possibly even a scroll bar even, that may be required two screenshots, for instance. More importantly, anything that has numbers on it. Something that uh, maybe you are wondering how it was set up before. Well, how was that, that mouse navigation? Oh, it's got numbers. All right, let's do a screenshot of that. Active window is good enough for me. Take the screenshot and save it on my screen, on my, my screen there. So let's do one more and then we're going to move on. Uh, let's find something else. Um, maybe even your default applications. You wanted to know that before you played with this. Because let's face it, we all have um, a senior moment, as one would say. Whereas the younger folks go, I forgot. <laughs> uh, anyways. A screenshot can be a friend. Basically, um, you know, three months from now, you're not going to remember something and you want to go back to what you had before, whether it be five minutes from now or five hours or five days. It's good to have screenshots. Now I'm going to close this. 
I'm going to show you some nifty ways you can save these files. So I'm going to open up Dolphin, your file manager, go to the home folder. And uh, I'm going to advocate that you either create your own folder or place it in one of these subfolder. So I'm going to use documents for this job. Right click, create new folder, call it something. I'm going to call mine appropriately enough screenshots. Then I'm going to open that up. Now I have a blank box. My path is home document screenshots. So I have several ways to get these files into here. The obvious is click and drag, but you can also right click and hit cut X or cut, which is control X and click in here and go control V. That may be obvious to you. And then also I can do a copy, which is control C and also click in here and do control V. But I can also do this and it's done, right? Move here or copy here. Well, do you want to leave the original on your desktop? Probably not. Move here. So it move, removes one file off of there. Now I can, I can continue doing this by clicking that, holding the control key and click, click, click. Or I could do it a different way. Thor has a different way here. Drag in a box around those three, grab all three at the same time and dump them in here. Move here. Move them all in here at the same time. Resizing my icons. What am I doing here again? I'm doing that magic where I zoom in and out. Making these large or small, in other words. Or you can drag this the old-fashioned way. Holding down your control key. Again, holding down your control key while using your, your computer mouse scroll wheel to resize. So you can also rename these things, obviously. And I suggest you do that. So what are we going to call this one? We could call it window decorations or we can just call it theme. All up to you. How do you rename anything? Right click. Rename. F2. So what are we going to call that? Uh, theme, right? We can call it whatever we want. My suggestion is when you rename these things that you probably stare at your clock down here and at least use the, the current date. That way you know how old the file is just by viewing it without opening it. So in this case it will be 2-25-23. All right, February 25, 2023. You can use your any naming convention whatsoever. What if you took a, a theme screenshot and you had a section that had a scroll bar on it? I'm going to open this for a second. So you're, you had a scroll bar in here and there's a bunch of themes. Even though that's lit up, you have some other stuff underneath there. Well, you could technically make two screenshots if you wanted to. I'm going to show you a neat trick that you can transfer that name into the next one. How do you do that? You right click, you hit rename, but you don't rename it. You right click on the highlighted blue and hit copy. Then you click out of here without doing anything. Then you re, uh, right click on this one and hit rename. And while that's highlighted, you hit paste. It took the name from here and transferred it here. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to scroll over to the word theme and write the word part two space or dash. So that would be the second screenshot of that one as an example of renaming something using transferring text from one to the other. Or you can just generally rename it from scratch. I'm not going to do these. I think you get the idea. And I can also view these in different, different light. Okay. Different ways of viewing stuff, folks. Now I'm going to close that. All right. So that's the screenshot tool. Walking through the menu, you got your search field. You have your uh, settings. You can actually alter that icon. I'll show that in future videos if you're curious. Um, let's see, we have uh, what's in our favorites. This is what comes with the system. Firefox web browser, system settings, Dolphin is your file manager, discover software center, and then of course install your system because I haven't installed mine. Under applications, it's A through Z, and in my case it's A through whatever the last app is, uh, VLC. Walking through the submenus, Kate is a text editor. Un unlike a, a word processor, it doesn't have a spell checker. A lot of folks like myself use text editors to write simple documents or script files. Those files are used to execute some functions within Lex. So graphics, you can install um, GIMP. That's a not similar to Photoshop. 
internet, you can install other web browsers either through terminal or you can also use your software manager, your software uh, discover center. Multimedia, I installed Simple Screen Recorder actually from Terminal, but you can certainly install that also from uh, your, your software uh, Discover Center. VLC does come installed. It's a multi, uh, you can even find these on mobile devices if you install them. So Office, you do not get a full Office suite, but you can certainly install those packages like LibreOffice and LibreOffice Writer and and the rest of the uh, individual uh, applications that go with the suite. The best part about LibreOffice is free and also available on Microsoft Windows and Apple Macs. Open source software, in other words, free. System, you have your Discover Software Center shortcut, just like you have on your panel bar. You have the Dolphin File Manager, just like you have on your panel bar. There's also the Info Center. It's the same thing as me clicking System Settings and scrolling down to the bottom. Install system, partition manager for, well, partitions, and uh, your console, in other words, terminal. And there's a system monitor here, and you can also always remember this. All Linux distributions have this built into it. Some of you older folks may appreciate this. You remember the movie Topper? You can probably find that on Tubi if you are watching movies online. Um, Tubi is a wonderful channel, and it's free. Uh, Topper is the name of the movie, and it's about a guy, elderly gentleman with a ghost. And I believe there's two movies. They're a cute watch. Uh, so I'm using that as a mnemonic reference. In other words, something to reference this command, top. Instead of topper, it's top, and it's a process monitor. That's built into just about every Linux distribution. If you hit close, you'll get a warning box, and just close it. Where did I leave off? I think I was, um, yeah, I was here. So menu editor, system monitor, utilities, archive tool for compressing stuff. Uh, I probably didn't mention of this. So if I wanted to, uh, let me find something. Do I have a standard file? Uh, well, I can use the screenshot as an example, but I wanted to find something else. Here's compression right there. So the one that's most compatible with uh, all three operating systems with Linux, Mac, and Microsoft Windows is zip, dot zip. Okay, just wanted to point that out. Okay, if you're doing a quick compression. Compressing files makes them smaller. That's all it does. All right, so where are we at? Uh, that would be uh, it's discussing archive tool. Moji selector, if you're into those cute little things, here's another text editor and not another text editor. Uh, your screen capture utility, remember I sunk it down there. You can also stick it on your desktop. There's an example of that. And if you get rid of these icons on your desktop, it doesn't get rid of them. It's just a shortcut. So is this one. All right, so that's Spectacle, and then there's Help. Down at the bottom is Applications, and that's what these things are. And keep in mind, you can always search for things. Uh, places is, well, it's Places. Different places, trash can, home folder, that kind of thing. You have uh, sleep, hibernate, restart, shutdown, click the arrow, lock, log out, and switch user. Right clicking on the screen, we have all kinds of things. Wallpaper, keep in mind you can set your own wallpaper to your heart's content in your folders. Configure displays. If you change your resolution and the screen goes black, whether you're doing a frequency or refresh rate or resolution, do not Turn off your power. Wait until the machine times out. It's normally 20 to 30 seconds, up to a minute sometimes. After you change the resolution and it goes blank, there's an incompatibility issue either with the resolution, the, the refresh rate, or your particular monitor or video card. Allow it to time out, and it'll revert back to your previous setting. So don't unplug that machine. Unless it's been three minutes, then I would probably do something about it. All right, what can I create new with? Well, folders, text files, all kinds of things. Icons, you can arrange your icons on your desktop different ways. Uh, there's way too many things to shake a stick at. So adding uh, uh, widgets is done this way. You have extra widget, widgets. You can either use the, my, my feature with the scroll thing. Just point your mouse anywhere in here and start scrolling. Or if you want to do it the old fashioned way, 
grab a hold of this thing. Some people find this harder. And I'll use one example. I'm going to grab this clock and drag it out of here. And I'm going to close this box. Now, since I dropped it here, most people make the mistake of trying to grab a hold of it and move it. It doesn't move. You have to right click on it and hit edit. Now you can resize it and move it. And then if you're done with it, hit the trash can or just click out and close this box. I'm going to get rid of it now. Remove clock. And I get one more undo. I'm going to close that. I don't need that. So that's uh, widgets. You can add widgets this way. You can add widgets this way. And I believe you can add widgets this way. There are so many different ways to, to do things in here. You know, if you're a brand new user to Linux, um, I wouldn't say this is the easiest to learn, but it's not that hard to learn either. And hopefully this video will give you a good perspective of this desktop. Thank you for watching and you folks take care and hopefully you have subscribed.